Hey, it's Luke here on the M5 Stack official channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well in isolation wherever you may be. In this lesson, I'm going to be focusing on programming your M5 Stack devices in MicroPython, but in a software that we've not used before. It's called Moo. We're going to be taking a look in this video about programming your M5 Stack devices in Moo whether it be with the UI Flow firmware or with the standard MicroPython firmware. You may have noticed recently on the forums there was a release of 1.5.0 UI Flow firmware. What's particularly special about this firmware is it's based on the latest version of MicroPython, version 1.12. It's also had a complete overhaul in the UI design. So let's have a quick look through it. If you set your Wi-Fi network in UI Flow when flashing the firmware, the first thing you'll see is the firmware trying to connect to the internet. Then you'll see your API key, but unlike previous versions, you can go into Apps from here and go to Settings. Let's have a look in Settings. Here we can switch between Internet Mode, USB Mode and App Mode. As you may know, internet mode for online, USB mode for offline version, and app mode we can see all of the different apps that we've created. Down at the bottom we can choose Reboot. Next up we can choose the server select, whether we choose the main server in Hong Kong or in Singapore. Hopefully we'll be adding some new servers soon. The startup hold option here allows you to choose whether you want the firmware to boot directly into the app you last created or to stay on the startup screen. Wi-Fi via access point is next. If you haven't set up your Wi-Fi, you can generate a new API key. Wi-Fi networks that you've connected to previously will be stored in this menu here. And lastly, reboot so we can reboot the device. So as I mentioned, in this video we're going to be programming the M5 stack in a different MicroPython IDE. That IDE is Moo. I used Moo quite some time ago with the microbit, but I noticed recently that the latest alpha versions support the ESP32. What is the M5 stack but an ESP32? Let's go ahead and download it and see how we can program the M5 stack with Moo. You can find the download link in the description. Once you've downloaded Moo and installed it, we'll open it up and we can see here in the left corner, Mode. In this menu we can choose ESP32 mode. Moo is a really nice IDE that has a lot of great features. Let's have a look through all of the features. So we can create scripts here and we can create multiple scripts in different tabs. The play button is for running scripts directly on the device, but unfortunately this doesn't work with the M5 stack. We'll have a look later at how to run our scripts on the M5 stack. Next we have files and REPL. The REPL mode can be accessed usually no matter what the M5 stack is doing. The file transfer function however relies on a little bit of workaround. We need to make sure that the M5 stack is in USB mode, then enter apps and run any of the apps in the list. Now when we press on the files button we can see that the file browser appears. This allows us to store any files in the Moo code folder which should be in your users. We can copy any file from within the Moo code folder which can usually be found in your user folder. We can also copy any files from the M5 stack file system into that folder. This makes it nice and easy to copy any modules we might want to to the flash of the M5 stack. Unfortunately it only works in the root level and we can't place files directly into the apps folder. Let's write a simple MicroPython program to see how well M5 stack works with the Moo IDE. Once we've finished programming, we need to save the file as temp.py. 
we can then replace the temp.py file that's already on our M5 stack with the one we just created. Then we can run the temp.py file from the apps list on the M5 stack. And there we go. Hello world. Up until now, we haven't made a complete documentation of the API. I've posted a link in the description to what we have of the API. M5 Stack user Adam Bryan has documented the blocks and their equivalent code in his UIflow handbook. There may be some of you who would much prefer to program the device in standard MicroPython version 1.12. That's easy enough to do. We simply flash the MicroPython firmware from the MicroPython official site. Unfortunately, not all of the modules for units, faces, and other M5 stack accessories have been released yet. Apparently, they'll be released once version 2.0 is completed. There has been plenty of modules created by the M5 stack user community that allows us to use the M5 stack without the UIflow firmware. I've made some repositories on my GitHub with the necessary files we'll need. Let's first see how we can set up the screen and SD card on the M5 stack core. We'll be using the modules provided in those GitHub repositories and standard MicroPython code. First, we're going to want to import a few of the classes from machine. Machine is generally used to interface with any kind of hardware. So we need to import SD card, pin, and SPI, or Serial Peripheral Interface. And we'll also import ILI9341, which is the module for the screen. Next, we'll need to create an SPI object. The parameters we need to give are the SEK pin, mozzie pin, master out slave in and miso pin master in slave out once we've done that we can create a tft object for our screen and then we use the ili 9341 that we imported and set its object as spi now we can use the function tft.on to turn on the display now we can see all of the tft objects various functions. First we can write some text, a simple hello world on the screen. First we pass its x and y coordinates and then our message. Oops, I just missed out one of the quotation marks. Okay, and then do a little bit of further testing, we can create a rectangle on the screen. First we input the x and y origin coordinates and then its width and height and finally the color as a hex value and there we go I'm not going to go into too much detail of all of the commands we can use on the screen next up we're going to set up the SD card so we'll create an SD object with the SD card module from machine and then we set the slot to 2 width to 1 and then again we set up the SPI pins the only thing different here is that we need to set up the chip select pin to 4 and there we have it to test that this has been successful we need to import the MicroPython OS or OS module and then use uos.mount command to mount the SD drive then we can check the contents of the SD using the uos.list directory command. This is an SD that I had in my Raspberry Pi. Now we can try and have a look at how to use the internal gyro of the M5 stack. We can import the MPU6886 library. Here are all of the functions inside that module. First, we'll need to import I2C, then set up the I2C pins, SCL is pin 22, 
SDA is pin 21 and then we create a object we could call it essentially we can do a scan to see which objects we have and then we can create an IMU object so to test this now I'm going to use IMU.getGyroData and there we've got a value of course we need to make a loop to make sure this is going to get an updated value every couple of seconds or microseconds so we'll create a loop make sure that we have time imported so we can make a delay otherwise it might be difficult to see the readings and then we can set up a simple while loop and then print the values to the console so we set it to IMU get gyro data and then we'll make sure to add a time dot sleep microseconds we can play around with this value and there we go we can see the values being printed out into the serial console hope this has been informative these are just a few of the basic functions of the M5 stack and we'll go into more depth in future videos one new addition to MicroPython version 1.12 is Bluetooth. I'm currently researching how to do some projects with Bluetooth in MicroPython and I hope to make a video on these soon. There is a list of all the units and which particular sensor they are using. Often if we type in Google the name of that sensor and then MicroPython we can find that some user has created their own MicroPython library. All we need to do then is copy that across to the flash system of the M5 stack. The Moo IDE also has some other nice features. We can zoom in or out to make our text bigger. We can set it to dark mode. There's also a nice syntax checker. All in all the Moo IDE is quite nice and I found it works much better than working in VS Code or the Python tab of the Flow website. I think I'll be using this IDE for future MicroPython videos. This is about all we have time for this week. If there's any specific project you'd like to see me do in MicroPython, please make sure to leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.